Hi, my name is Maria Alvarado. I'm a 53-year-old woman. I was diagnosed with NASH cirrhosis in 2012. And uh, I was very fortunate that I was a survivor of a liver transplant. When you were diagnosed with fatty liver, what came to your mind? The first thing I like, I was shocked. Went uh, with a fatty liver because actually, first of all, I, I just remember now that the Minister of Health called me uh, to check on me and saying that I was with hepatitis B when it was a fatty liver. And from there on, my doctor actually took care of it, and like I, I was, it was shocking. I had just started my new job, and I t had a two, and, a two and a half year old son, child. So it's like, and I had my other two ones that they were small, and I just said like, wow, my family now, like, what's gonna be after? Like that, that was the first thing with my family, and I said I'm still young, very young, so. That was the hardest part. What does NASH cirrhosis mean? And were you a drinker? Okay. Uh, NASH um, means uh, cirrhosis means non-alcoholic steatal hepatitis. I am. I was not a drinker at all. I was like casual drinker as a one cup or something, and it was the cooler sign. So I was never a drinker or heavy drinker or anything like that. Okay. Two, one, action. Hi, my name is Priscilla. I am Maria's daughter. I was her caregiver throughout her liver transplant experience. Hi, I'm Dylan Alvarado. I'm the youngest of the three siblings from Maria Alvarado. My name is Kenny Alvarado. I am the second eldest son of Maria. I used to live in Canada, and I'm currently living in the States, and I'm right now visiting the family here in Toronto. What changes did you have to do in your life to take care of your mom? Because I had a seven month old, I had to bring in extra help. Um, you do have to be there 24 seven, basically for the first couple of weeks. Um, so I had my spouse on board with my two older children and my grandmother helped me with my baby as I was awake in the middle of the night for meds and for pain and painkillers for my mom. I would describe the process as very challenging. There were a lot of changes that had to be made over the years. Um, and a lot of these changes came in all sorts of sizes. For example, one of the challenges that we faced over the years was the change in our everyday diet. Um, in my home, we, you know, we had a high sodium diet, I would describe it as. And um, when my mom kind of got sick and diagnosed with liver diseases, um, getting rid of that high sodium in our diet was very important um, in order for a better life for her. And this was a time when my mom got sick um, in my life where I was going to school, working for, uh, working part-time and just finding the time to take her to these doctor's appointments um, kind of really made it a lot stressful to do all these other um, things in my life like going to school, going to work and you know having a social life. What role did you take in your mom's illness before and during the hospital? So before um, she was admitted to the hospital, it was a bit of a challenge. Um, I used to call her every single day just to be like more of an emotional support. Um, it was a bit of a challenge, but when I was here, I was definitely you know helping her um, be more active. You know, making sure that she was going for her walks. Um, eating right, you know, I would not take like bring like any food with salt. Um, also, I helped her, you know, when she was getting tapped. You know, she needed somebody there. Like she used to hold and grip on to like uh, the hospital bed. my finger so you can do the comparable yeah. 
I was there to, you know, support her through that. Um, and yeah, just, you know, I remember um, she needed help to even to put some socks on during that time. You know, she was just so big, she couldn't reach for her, for her feet. And I had to put like on her socks. I remember going on walks like every single morning with her, uh, you know, at least to make her less uh, bloated. What would you have done if you had to go back to when you were declared fatty liver? I would say one of the main factors would be looking after myself, taking more seriously as a mother of three children and a wife. It's like, it was kind of tough though. So I always looked after them, but didn't uh, look after myself. And I would say other, the other thing too would be eat healthier and be more active, which it was hard for me being active due to being a mother and working and all that. So it was very hard and tough for me to be active. What was the hardest experience you had to go through with your mom? During my mom's liver disease, there was a certain point in her um, journey where she wasn't feeling the greatest and none of us knew what was going on. There's, there's one event in particular that I can remember um, it was a regular day during the summer and my mom was feeling very, very tired. Uh, so she wanted to, all she wanted to do was uh, rest. She wasn't eating. Um, at this point in her life, the color of her skin was changing colors. Um, so we knew something was wrong, but we just didn't know what was going on. So on that day, my mom slept for, I want to say close to 12 to 13 hours straight. And it was kind of alarming to me. You know, my mom doesn't usually sleep for that long. And um, I can remember going back to her room a couple times trying to wake her up. And when I woke her up, um, she would wake up, but would be kind of puzzled and not knowing where she was, kind of like lost in her sleep and startled. Um, I knew this was an issue, but at this point I had, you know, I was working and I had to, to go in for a shift. So I called my sister and, I just let her know that, you know, I was a little concerned about my mom, you know, she's been sleeping for, you know, for over 13 hours and she's still tired and she's not really being herself. Um, so I ended up going to work and about an hour later I get a phone call from my sister saying that my mom's on the way to the hospital. It wasn't until a couple hours later where, uh, when we arrived to the hospital that the doctor um, explained to us that my mom was in a position with her health where her liver wasn't filtering the toxins in her body and the toxins were moving to her head, um, which, ended, which could end up putting in a coma. And the fact that I was able to go into, um, kind of stop her from that coma that could end up, you know, taking her from us, I, I would say that was the hardest part of uh, her liver disease. How did you feel when she came to the last stage of cirrhosis? Ah, uh, tough one there. Um, Ooh, uh, this was like around Christmas 2019. Um, throughout that whole Christmas, you know, season and even going into the new year, I remember, um, I received a phone call and I was in Arkansas. I had to call in my brother who lives in the States. You know, it's time for him to come in. We don't think mom's going to make it. Uh, cried with my aunt on the phone. That phone call with my uncle was dramatizing because we all cried together. You know, prepare yourself for the worst. You know, she's not going to make it um, because, you know, he, he works in the hospital and he, he's seen people in that bad shape. Uh, so I remember driving back from Arkansas to New Jersey, 16 hours, and then I made myself available to go right away to see my mom. This was like probably four days before Christmas. Uh, during Christmas, I remember she wasn't able to walk. She was in a wheelchair. We put covers on her to stay warm and she was still, you know, getting shivers. I remember uh, Christmas, we spending Christmas, you know, in the hospital. New Year, she spent Christmas in the hospital and then I think it was the first week of January of 2020 is I, I was with her when the needle kind of, like she was getting tapped 
and the needle kind of broke in her in her belly and she was internally bleeding uh there she was after that she was like the doctors didn't know but like the next morning she was like in the icu it was really really hard um uh, my husband was my support like i randomly would just break down and i i can't really explain it like it was really really tough um you had to i had to be there to support everybody because my brothers would call me and ask me how mom's doing but you know they don't want to hear the bad news you just have to you know be that shoulder to cry on but i didn't i had to cry on my husband's shoulders i had to cry on other people's shoulders but it, it was really hard i remember like this is the this is the end this is where the part where it's like oh my mom is about to pass away uh she was in the icu and luckily it was like this was i remember first week of january january 5th ish and she was in the icu for like a few days until she got her liver transplant How did you feel on the day of the surgery and after the surgery? The day of surgery, um, I was scared, nervous. Um, you don't know what to expect. You know, you're going through this for the first time. I was very happy. Um, throughout her journey, I saw how much faith my mom had, and it was uh, very relieving um, when we got found the news that she was um, finally going to get better. I remember her phone call where she was at the point where she couldn't, you couldn't really hear her over the phone. And I just remember I'm having surgery um, at 12 o'clock. That's all I remember from her phone call. I hung up, I prayed. Um, I prayed to my grandfather who unfortunately passed from this. Um, and then my father called me to confirm that she was gonna have a liver transplant. Um, she couldn't eat after 12 o'clock. So there I even got even, I believe, more nervous. Like I started to shake, I started to cry by myself. I was home with the baby. Um, I had to prepare myself, I had to prepare my household because I had to be at the hospital um, for five o'clock um, when my husband would get home. And then after surgery, same thing because you don't know what to expect. You don't know um, what's gonna happen next. Yeah, she had a new, she was getting a new liver, but you know you don't know what's gonna happen you know those 24 hours are critical what if her body rejects it you know it's all these questions and all these nervous feelings and scared and you just you don't know what to feel you just i just prayed that's all i felt was i needed to pray and i needed to to just focus on her during this time too i wasn't really that scared because i really had a lot of faith and trust in the, the team of doctors. Um, I was also, in a way, kind of preparing myself because I knew even though that she was going to get a new liver, there were still um, a lot of challenges that we were going to have to face over the next couple uh, months. Say hi, everybody. I love everyone. I love you all. My staff. My family. Everybody. We're glad to help, sweetie. Yeah. We're very happy to help. I love everybody. Wonderful job. You did all the work. Uh -huh. Oh. You did all the work, my dear. Oh, my dear.
How does it feel to see your mom on her one year anniversary since the surgery? It feels amazing. It feels great. Um, I'm so grateful for the doc. The, sorry for the staff at the Toronto General Hospital, the nurses, the doctors, everybody, including family as well. Um, she's able to help me now with my children to be a grandmother that she missed out on these last couple of years. You know, it's it's great. I I can really can't express what I feel. Like it feels. Amazing. Now that my mom has a, a new liver, I feel very happy. Um, now we're able to do a lot of the things that we couldn't do before. Um, when my mom was suffering with her liver disease, there were days where she couldn't walk because she was still blo bloated with her fluid retention. But now that she is able to receive a, a new liver, um, you know, we're able to do the things that we couldn't do before, like, you know, little things like play tennis or, you know, go to the park and play some basketball. Um, it just feels really nice because, you know, there was a time in my life or a long period of time where I couldn't be able to do these things and now I finally can. Do you think this is hereditary? Did anyone in your family suffer from this? Uh, yes, I do believe so, that this is a hereditary. Um, my dad had it. Uh, he passed away with cirrhosis. Uh, all his siblings had it too. They had to liver cancer, and now my siblings has it too. They're carrying it on, and same with now I have two of my children that are having liver issues too, but has I mean gone to the stage with a fatty liver. With this pandemic going on, how difficult was the recovering process? Uh, the recovering. The first couple of months, it was just great. I took it very well, but it's just after it, uh, it was a scary. It's scary until now because of the epidemic. I have to be more um, cautious uh, because I'm a higher risk uh, due to my condition, right? So it's it's tough though. And it's like now with the doctors, I can't go to the hospital. It's all virtual. And which I don't enjoy it because I like to see my doctors uh, get an update and see them but still they're great if any questions they're always there Yeah, I'm just gonna acquire everything though. You know, like, it doesn't have to be a picture. Uh, later on, later on. I just wanna like. Did you blow it already? No, I didn't blow it. Oh, okay, okay. Did I blow a candle? No. No, COVID. No. My first year. First year? My first year of anniversary. I'm like, as of today. As of today. As of today. At 7. There, at 7 o'clock, I was rushing up to the surgery room. We're still oh the same. Still there. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> uh, 9 o'clock is when they start cutting me out. And I guess 11 o'clock, no, what? 11? 11? It was around 5 o'clock in the morning, yes. Wow. 5 o'clock in the morning, I was done. So, from 9 till 5. Ooh. My first year. A year ago today. That's crazy. God's blessing. God's blessing. Hey, I'm gonna have my first cut. Nice. Now they're great. Now they're great brownish. 
Oh, my first no. year! <laughs> so happy birthday, Chica. No, no happy birthday. No. It's my first year anniversary. Happy birthday. Isn't that great? Ready happy to blow? Make another. Yeah. Another yeah. blessing for even from now on. Uh, no rejections. Let's go. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, Carlos brought the cake. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you, Carlos. Oh, it's for a special person. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. What do you have to say to the people that have the same illness or are suffering from an illness? Um, don't lose faith. Don't lose hope. Um, if you're just going through it, if you're just diagnosed and it's the doctor has told you it's reversible, challenge yourself to be a better you. Staying healthy, eating better, getting active, and cutting out the alcohol and the things that kind of affect your liver negatively. Um, because if you want to live a better tomorrow, these are the steps that we need to make today. Um, and it does help. Manifest that everything's going to be all right. Um, do your research. Try to live a better lifestyle, and depending on your situation, like every situation is different. But I remember, like my mom, she was in the worst shape, and honestly, she went through all this with the intention and with the mindset that she's gonna be all right. She was in good hands. Stay positive. Um, don't give up. You know, don't lose hope. I would say challenge yourself for a lifestyle change. Focus on yourself. Focus on the diet um, and also be active. Follow the doctor's instructions. Be strong. Be a fighter. If I did it, you can do it. Be, I was called a warrior for what I went through. You can be a warrior too.